Um, so uh, my name is Brian Stinson. I work on the CentOS project. Uh, normally, um, well, I'd be working on some of the CI infrastructure and, and things like that. But uh, for the, the past few months, um, I've actually been working on building CentOS 8 uh, just as you know, part of my day-to-day -day job and stuff. So I'm talking here about uh, building CentOS with familiar tools. Um, but to do that, I think it's probably, um, well, of those of you in here, how many of you used CentOS on your system once or twice? Yeah? Okay. Um, to talk a little bit about some, some history and, uh, and kind of what we do as a project, we take the sources that come as part of the source delivery process from Red Hat, uh, for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, um, and we rebuild those sources and produce a free distribution called CentOS. Um, that's, uh, you know, there's a, if we go back into ancient history about why, you know, this all came about, that'd be an interesting discussion, but uh, not for this, this particular talk. Uh, but I brought that up to say that, you know, it's basically a, a huge rebuild operation that we're going through here. Uh, we're taking sources that have already been, um, you know, uh, produced in, into an operating system and recreating it you know, out in the open. Um, and uh, I guess you could call it for the contemporary history of CentOS. And by contemporary, I mean, you know, going back to the, the CentOS five days. Um, you know, four and three are, are also pretty similar in the, in the patterns of the ways that we built the distribution. But uh, in, typically in the, in the CentOS five and six days, um, uh, you know, this was, was kind of our, our mode of operation. That guy in the middle, his head kind of got cropped out. That's Johnny Hughes. He, um, he's been building RPMs for CentOS for uh, a long, long time. Uh, but basically, we feed Johnny coffee and source RPMs and out comes CentOS. Um, and for the, uh, for the, the lifetime of, um, of those two systems, this was a... Um, it was, a, it was a pretty manual operation is kind of what I'm going here to say. We're, the building CentOS, even today, has some really kind of bespoke operations to it because our mission is to go out and recreate sources that have, uh, rebuild sources that have already been, uh, been produced. Um, so for, for CentOS 6, uh, the sources come, came from ftp.redhat.com. Um, those were in source RPM format, you know, posted to there. We have um, some some triggers that look for new uh, new content at ftp ftp.redhat.com and uh, run it through our build system. So Remzool is uh, the build system that came out of the the CentOS 6.0 release. Um, we found that, uh, and this is this is kind of why I talk about CentOS 5 and 6 being the sort of the start of the contemporary age of of CentOS is because uh, we kind of got away from, you know, local mock builds on a, a build farm somewhere um, to actually scheduling builds in a, a separate build system, and that started with the with CentOS 6. Um, Rimzool is a, a collection of uh, is basically a Beanstalk queue. If you're familiar with the Beanstalk messaging uh, system, and uh, a bunch of mock roots. Uh, and a build farm, you know, obviously you need builders for that sort of thing. Uh, but it's a, it's relatively simple compared to what uh, w even what was going on in the um, in the Fedora space at the time that that these distributions started. Um, and it got a little more complicated as as things went on uh, in the CentOS seven days. Um, this was around uh, you might remember the the Red Hat partnership with the CentOS project. Um, a bunch of the developers for CentOS were actually became Red Hat employees around this time. Uh, and we started some extra, um, extra activities in the project besides just producing the CentOS Linux that we know and love. Uh, we added the special interest groups. Those were focused at projects that were layered on top of the operating system. Uh, we started with folks like um, uh, RDO, did a distribution of OpenStack on top of, of CentOS and uh, Gluster, Ceph, uh, folks like that. And they're still delivering content to this day uh, using a Koji instance that we stood up for that purpose. 
Um, and again, this is, um, you know, this is kind of a tale of 15 build systems or so because we maintain the Remsul build system that we have for five and six. Uh, Remsul is also used um, in a separate capacity to build the CentOS 7 distro. We have the Koji build system and we just ended up retiring, you know, a, a, a few months ago. Um, we had a plague set up to help us with um, a, uh, uh, an army HFP bring up um, because traditionally with you know some of these other things uh, that we've been talking about so far uh, bringing up an extra architecture is, is kind of hard uh, to do uh, but with CentOS 7 the sources uh, they, Red Hat started shipping the sources to rel, uh, the rel sources to git.centos.org so that's a um, you know, that's a, a place for them to dump all of their packages, but it's also the, the place of record for uh, what goes into RHEL uh, from a source perspective. Uh, and we actually rewrote Remzool. Um, it's open source. You can find it on GitHub under the, the CentOS organization. Um, it's, like I said, it's a simple uh, beanstalk thing and uh, uh, built around some, some mock roots. But even in this, um, in this process, like uh, the the workflow itself really didn't change a whole lot. Um, we're still back to uh, you know handing coffee and source RPMs to Johnny, and then out comes CentOS because uh, the the source layouts in git.centos.org are basically take a source RPM, explode it out into the directory that you're used to with uh, SRPMs specs. A um, couple of the metadata files in there, and then just check it into Git. Um, and this is um, the sort of the handmade nature of the way that we've built CentOS in the past. Uh, it'll kind of give you a clue as to some of the problems that we've had. Um, and so some of the problems that transcend releases, we've had these problems, you know, from um, from the day one, this is uh, things that we just deal with as a matter of course when building a, a CentOS distri distribution. Uh, each release has its own individual needs. Um, CentOS 6 is probably, I would say, one of the um, uh, one of one of the ones we have to spend the least amount of time on catering to its individual needs. It's pretty straightforward. We build the source RPMs and it comes out. Um, CentOS 7 actually grew. Uh, the the need for us to build different parts of the distribution with different tool chains. Um, so if you're familiar with the developer tool sets and stuff that, that ended up uh, being shipped in the middle of the, the 7 release stream, um, we had to, to kind of uh, tweak the way that we build some of the packages and um, uh, and leave the, uh, the other stuff alone. Uh, w one of the other problems, and we've we found this in the uh, in the eight series as well, is we don't always get the f what I call the filler uh, from Red Hat, and uh, th this comes in the form of intermediate build roots. Um, you know the uh, the pathological case is you have a, a particular library or a, an application, uh, you know, that has a 1.0.1 release uh, that requires 1.0.0 to build. Um, when they release 1.0.2, it itself requires that middle build, but Red Hat may or may not release that depending on where it lands in their, uh, in their update cycle. So we may not get that intermediary package that was used to build uh, um, something that, was, that, that they've produced, and we have to kind of go and, and engineer what was in the build route at the time when Red Hat built it so that we can go back and, and kind of inject those things in. And that's, that's part of why uh, the process for CentOS has been so manual. Um, and it's also, uh, it also speaks to some of the, uh, the requirements that we have uh, that don't necessarily shoehorn nicely into uh, build systems like Koji. Uh, for example, we, we regularly rebuild um, uh, particular binary RPMs and use the same NVR against different components in the build route, depending on you know, what we find about uh, the libraries that were in there at the time. And Koji doesn't like it when you do that. Um, there's a, a couple of operations you can do that, uh, that'll let you do that, but some of the other tools end up breaking if you 
uh, if you do that too often. Uh, time bombs and other package craft is uh, a real problem. Uh, so uh, I don't know if they just think it's funny or something, but uh, a lot of, of you know far upstream developers will put in uh, tests that uh, include a certificate or um, some sort of date check or something like that that gets committed to the package and run as percent as part of percent check, and that is brutal for us because there there are times when. Um, the certificate will be generated at the beginning of the rel development cycle and it will expire before the the actual rel release has has gone out so rel has actually built it it worked just fine in in their build system we go and try and rebuild it in centos and the certificate's expired that's a, a huge problem that we'd find in more packages than we should uh but then um by the time we get to uh to a even a .o release, especially um, the Fedora release that it's you know that a, a rel major release is based on is usually two releases ahead at this point. So uh, if you take uh, rel eight for example, is based on Fedora twenty eight. Uh, rel eight released on on May fifth of this year. Uh, Fedora twenty eight went end of life on May twenty eighth, and we're still in the middle of the build process here for. Uh, for CentOS 8, and we typically find that uh, we need to go back and, and sort of do um, some archaeology to find things that satisfy dependencies or to use as, as part of our base infrastructure to actually get, uh, get this stuff out the door. Because um, we don't, uh, f especially for the, the older releases, we don't really pay much attention to what goes on internally in Red Hat. Um, just to, to sort of keep some separation there. Um, with eight, we're relaxing some of those rules. It's a little bit easier for us to operate as a team and figure out what uh, what Red Hat was doing at the time. Um, but still, we find ourselves going back to Fedora quite a bit, and we're going back to an end of life distribution to to kind of get some things bootstrapped, and and that's that can be a problem. Uh, so CentOS 8 was an opportunity to automate some of our processes, um, and we've always wanted to sort of abuse the tools that Fedora and RHEL use, just as a as a as part of the family. You know, it makes it it makes it easier to talk about things with other developers when uh, we can hand them a Koji build, and they can see the output of of what happened at the process besides going on to uh, the rest of our logs and trying to dig through the um, the way that we've done things before. And it, CentOS 8 was kind of a breaking point to allow us to reduce some of those problems I was talking about before. Um, I'll talk about those in a minute, but um, CentOS 8 also came with a few, um, a few motivating problems. Uh, and mostly it was around modules. Um, and this is not about the, the usability of um, of that as a you know as an actual consumer of the operating system, but more of how are we going to build these, and uh, that that turned into a particular challenge uh, for us when we're actually trying to recreate what's going on after the fact, uh, and uh, so we were we did allow ourselves to relax some of the rules, um, so for CentOS eight uh, module NSVCs can differ from RHEL. Um, the the name and the stream are always going to match, but the version and the context are generated by the build system, and um, that's just something that we can uh, that we're allowing ourselves to to relax a little bit. Now, I will say that uh, we're not relaxing the uh, the restriction on RPM NVRs and base OS, uh, so all of that's going to maintain the you know same NVRs as as you know and love with with RHEL. Um, but the you know relaxing that that modular thing uh, made things a little bit easier for us, and uh, separating the implementation um, of the build system itself for uh, you know typically in the past we've sort of run everything including a bunch of our alternate architectures we're run through the same build system same time. Um, you know, Johnny would go and, and 
uh, drink his coffee and, and submit a whole bunch of builds to the, the same system. But we've allowed ourselves to separate those implementations uh, just as our policy changes a little bit. Um, there's some interesting things going on in uh, multi-arch for the, uh, the RHEL 7.7 .7 release, I think. Um, and we're, we're kind of having to figure out what, what that's going to mean for us. Um, but our policies are going to change, especially as you know, we go through the 10-year the life cycle. And um, separating out some of the, the build systems in different places will let us uh, kind of manage things a little bit differently. And so we, we came up with a, um, a tool called Inbox. And really, all that this is, um, it, it sounds fancy and like it's a, you know, an actual thing. Uh, but basically, it's just Koji MBS, uh, the, the Koji Hub, Koji Web, uh, the module build service, and a, a couple of helper services that can be deployed in an OpenShift namespace. Um, so we containerized the Koji Hub um, and MBS. Uh, that way we can, th there's a couple of things that you can get from that. You can use the, um, some of the storage layers that are in OpenShift to actually manage your volumes and, and things like that. But you can also administratively separate things that need separate, uh, separate build systems, but you can um, consolidate a little bit of the management. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about how we did that in just a minute, but uh, I wanted to put up a link. This is sort of the upstream as it exists right now. And yes, there are two Bs in that, uh, um, that repo name. Uh, if you want to want to take a look, this is something that uh, Patrick wrote uh, quickly for us while we were uh, sort of scaffolding this out. Um, so how did it go? Uh, we heavily modified our instance of Inbox just as we, you know, did the day-to-day -day process of building eight. We ended up needing config changes. Uh, that were different from the defaults and, and things like that. So um, we've diverged a little, uh, you know, actually quite a bit from upstream. Uh, but we started with two instances. Uh, for CentOS 8, our primary architectures are x86-64, PPC-64LE, and ARCH-64. We have a community member who is um, really interested in the 32-bit ARM space, and we gave, we gave him a whole Koji and MBS setup so that he could do um, uh, ARM HFP for us. And there's a link to the um, uh, to the primary one. Uh, this is what it looks like. You know, your uh, the Koji interface that you know and love. Um, and this is something new for us too, because uh, typically we've for the uh, for the seven release, we posted all of our build logs and things to uh, uh, an Apache instance that we have, and folks could uh, go out and look. But they didn't have this nice interface. You know, relatively nice interface compared to. Uh, digging through uh, Apache indexes and stuff, um, of, of looking at what we were doing at the time. And this has been, you know, kind of helpful. We're, we're still ironing out some of the policies with our QA group, who kind of controls the release process of CentOS. Um, so we're not, uh, we're not exposing the artifacts of the images that uh, come out of Koji, for example. Uh, but we want to expose the RPMs, the logs, the you know other collateral that that runs through the build system as we go, um, and that brings up another point. Uh, since we have a Koji, it's easier easier for us to use existing Compose tooling like Punji, um, <clears throat> and it lets us build entire trees early. So for the five, six, seven days, you know we're building things by hand. The trees actually didn't come. The the repositories with the um, the correct metadata and in the right places, uh, that actually didn't come until very, very late in the process. Um, I would call that, uh, we did our, our uh, repo structure as part of the RC process even um, before we pushed it out to the mirrors. And that, that, that also means that we did Anaconda like last um, whenever we, we pushed out a release, which is entirely the wrong place to put that for. Um, uh, for this distribution, because uh, a lot of times we need patches for debranding and things like that. Uh, so this let us build entire trees early. Uh, basically, as soon as we had something that would close dependencies, we can uh, generate the entire trees and the images that go with them. And that helped us uh, quite a bit with, uh, with the QA process of running it through um, our test harnesses. Um, you know, we check some of the, the metadata, things like that. Um, and having cloud images from day one 
was really nice to be able to spin up in in some of our um, uh, some of our KVM environments that we have for testing. Uh, so what's next uh, for Mbox? We need to reintegrate some of those those customizations that we did. Uh, the, the random patches to the config files and updating the images and, and things like that. Um, we need to work on getting those back upstream. Um, we've been, you know, kind of heads down in the build process. We haven't really done much in the way of, of upstream contribution in that aspect, but that's coming. Uh, we plan on deploying more instances for other projects and architecture bring ups. Um, we don't know what those are going to look like yet, but I, I don't know. There's rumors of, um, of folks that are interested in other uh, architecture projects and things, and Inbox would be a great uh, resource for them. Uh, the community build service, I mentioned we have that Koji instance for our special interest groups. Um, we're looking into deploying an instance of Inbox for that as well, uh, just to sort of centralize the management of, of these various um, instances. Uh, the next is to kind of stabilize the services themselves in uh, Inbox. We caught a couple of things. Um, you know, just as, as things went on, because we had it in OpenShift, it was nice to be able to iterate on those containers and kind of update them in place. Because we actually caught a few uh, a few bugs in um, the module build service as it updated. Uh, and because it was in OpenShift, we could just roll back to the previous image and go from there until we got that fixed. Uh, so the last thing is to um, to come here to Flock and to talk to other folks who might be interested in this particular pattern of, um, it, you know, it's almost a build system as a service pattern that folks can come, you know, I, I'd like to, um, to collaborate to get this into uh, Fedora infrastructure as well in, in case that's a, a, a useful pattern for folks. And to really see if we can turn this into a, a general purpose tool that we can use for, for both, both uh, distributions. Uh, so what's next for CentOS? Um, we need to finish the QA process. Uh, we need to build and test. Uh, this is for CentOS 8, that is. Uh, we need to build and test the non-zero day updates. Uh, so if you're familiar with, with how things work, we've had one batch already that's been posted, and I think another one's coming pretty soon. Um, but We've got all of the zero day updates for 8.0 are already built. And we need to update our CI, CI infrastructure and some of our other services to include the C8 images just shortly after um, we, uh, we flip the bits over and, and uh, release everything to the mirrors. Um, yeah, that's all that I have for today. And uh, to answer the first question, uh, we are going to release CentOS 8 whenever it's ready. We don't really know when that's going to be yet, um, but we're, we, we've got the builds done and the, the QA folks are, are doing a really good job at, um, at getting that tested. So uh, that's the information. What's that? Are the QA folks No, uh, most of them are um, uh, you know, out remote somewhere, and uh, typically those folks just engage with the, with the CentOS project. I don't know many of them that, um, that do much over here in Fedora land, but... Um, it's all part of the same tree. Yeah, same tree, um, different branches and stuff. So a, lo a lot of them do uh, focus really heavily on the CentOS side, um, and they, they do quite a bit of work for us, so that's really helpful. Yeah. Yep. Um, like, you don't have CentOS workstations unless right. or something like that. Yep. Should be no surprise, no developer Red Hat actually likes that breakdown either. So, CentOS <laughs> 8, is it going to be kind of a continuation of, of trying to have everything just be in one repo? And if so, how are you dealing with modules? Yeah, so the, um, we do have the base OS and app stream split. Um, and, and you know the, the way that Red Hat is working on that now, they're they're kind of turning that into uh, um, the, the different editions and and variants and stuff. They're turning that more into a reporting problem than a yeah. a content delivery problem. So that's the, I, I 
I don't know what they're what they're doing with that. The plan is to. Um, uh, I mean, basically, we include the exact packages that are in RHEL base OS in CentOS base OS, and then the same module streams are in AppStream, and then also the non-modular RPMs are going in AppStream as well. Um, so we're, we're maintaining that split, but um, and then adding on our extra bits, we have um, CentOS Extras and uh, CentOS Plus that we'll also be maintaining in the in the eight release. That's for um, just things that we add on that is never going to be relevant to the RHEL ecosystem, like our um, our CentOS release packages for the special interest groups. If you want to install uh, Gluster or RDO or something, they put a CentOS release uh, package in those repositories that you can enable um, and get that content. But, but yeah. Uh, inbox, um, the name is, is for actual, uh, I think it's a, an expansion of uh, module build in a box because the, the original goal was we found out that we needed to do modules and didn't really have a, a good way to do that in a, in a test environment. And that, that name is used for something else already. Yeah, there's, I'm sure there are many things that, email right, format. yep, plenty of names, um, got to pick one, but. Yeah, and there's there's two B's in the in the repo name, so I. But not in the URLs. In the. That's right, that's right. Uh, that was just a typo. Um, yeah, something that went in our DNS and. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, I, I don't, is are we recording? Do you know if we? Okay. Um, I'll I'll tell you a couple of typo stories when we're not recording oh, and <laughs> okay there we go. <clears throat> Other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. Rel eight uh, has separated the loop packages. They, yes. Uh, they gave you the sources. Yeah. Uh, will there be a possibility to enable that repo to install them on? Uh, yeah, so the, um, we're, we're not actually composing build root, like, so if you're a rel engineer, we're not composing build root uh, as a separate thing. Those RPMs exist in Koji, um, you know, in our inbox instance, but uh, that's not something that we're really interested in um, in composing as a, as a release artifact. No, so there's um, there's a set of packages that uh, that Rel has used in the, the actual build routes to build individual RPMs, um, and Red Hat is not shipping those to Rel just because they're they're build route only. They have a, a separate life cycle, and um, there's not a, a support engagement with that particular repository. Um, they ship the sources. For that particular repository to get .centos.org, um, we actually needed all of those packages to build CentOS 8, but we're not taking the build root only packages and turning that into a repo somewhere that you can enable because um, really they're only useful to build the distribution itself, um, or they're they're only used to to build the distribution itself. I'm not going to comment on the usefulness or or whatever, but um, but yeah. Right. The problem from a developer's standpoint is um, if anything was like a leaf build requires or something, so maybe it was a uh, tool that gets uh, launched from a make file that is just a program that runs and produces an output file, that's only needed at build time, but it's still needed. Yeah. So internally, this is difficult. Yep. Space. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that's a, a, a good idea, really. Um, and I don't know. I, I think CentOS might want to reconsider that. Like, at least making it available as a, as a separate repo, but not necessarily. Yeah, it's it so it's a it's another thing where we don't. Um, well, 
for some of the same reasons that Red Hat doesn't want to support that as a you know something that they ship to customers it's something that we don't necessarily want to um, like we don't want to promote that as a um, a thing that we sanction as a project just because of the um, you know the limited guarantees about security fixes and and things like that um, so yeah, no, it's, I mean, yeah it's, I, it's a problem for it, it's like it's it sucks yeah, like it, it's, it's you know on my laptop and and doing stuff it really does suck as a uh, as an experience but um, but from a project perspective like we don't want to ship things to our users that um, you know has ambiguous support um, or uh, uh, ambiguous lifecycle stuff so that's the reason behind that. Anything else? All right. Thanks, guys.